car market prediction from the homework guy for 2024. Ladies and gentlemen, rev up your engines and hold on to your seats because today we're diving headfirst into the exciting world of the automotive industry with a data-driven prediction for 2024, current inventory levels, and eight unique opportunities that you can capitalize on. Now you've probably heard the rumors, the whispers, and the headlines, but it's true, the car market has been on a wild ride, and we're here to tell you that the roller coaster is nowhere near its end. That's right, buckle up because all signs are pointing in one direction, and that direction will continue to go down. The car market is heading into 2024 on a thrilling, declining trend. But hold on a minute. Before you start to worry about possible downsides, let us tell you why this is the most exciting news for car buyers like you. Yes, things like lower prices, better deals, jaw-dropping discounts. We're about to unveil the incredible perks of a market in decline. So if you've been dreaming of that new set of wheels or a stylish upgrade to your ride and you missed out on a year-end car deal, you're just fine because the timing going into 2024 couldn't really be more perfect. We've seen clear evidence already and we are witnessing the transformation of the car market into a buyer's playground. Don't miss out on the fact that automakers have begun to toss aside some of their strategy of reining in incentives like we saw in the past four years. Discounts are also expected to increase, and both factors will continue to push average transaction prices down. Stick with us, and we will guide you into making the smartest car buying decision in 2024. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell, because you don't want to miss a single moment of this thrilling journey of 2024. Let's roll. Let's start with some great news on the total car inventory end of things. In December, Cox Automotive reported that car inventory supply surpassed 2.5 million units, something we predicted last summer, and a 71-day supply for the first time in two years. It's definitely no longer a question about whether there are enough cars available. Those days are over. So for starters, we opened 2024 with the biggest inventory we have seen in a very long time. A 71-day national average supply is very significant. To help you out, let's drill down into where that puts each car brand. Toyota is still the caboose on this national average inventory train with only a 32-day supply. But it actually wasn't that long ago when day supply for Toyota was down in the teens. So while it still isn't at significant levels, it is much improved. And we have had several channel members with our coaching find very good Toyota deals out there. That's right. Honda has also seen a nice improvement sitting now at a 40-day supply and we think Lexus sitting at a 47-day supply is a bit of foreshadowing of where Toyota inventory levels are heading this year. I have to say I'm surprised that Kia is hanging out at a 48-day supply, with Land Rover, Subaru, BMW, Cadillac, and Hyundai being the only remaining brands below the national average. Chevy is at 71 days right now, which is the national average, with Porsche, GMC, Mercedes, Volkswagen, and Acura sitting between 72 and 82-day supply. All very healthy levels for better car deals, and we've seen many of them. Then we get into the overachievers category, with Mini, Mitsubishi, Genesis, and Nissan all sitting comfortably at 94 to 101 days. Lots of better deals are out there on these car brands, friends. Get serious about your car shopping and hold these dealers accountable. It gets really serious now with Audi, Ford, Buick, Mazda, and Volvo sitting from 104 to 106 day supply. We've assisted several channel members in recent weeks with very attractive car deals on each of these brand categories. Not just on new, but one to two year old vehicles also selling very attractively. Ram, Infiniti, and Jeep are well above the 100 day mark with 114, 120, and 128 days supply respectively. All I can say is wow. Lincoln, Chrysler, Jaguar, Alfa Romeo, Dodge, and Fiat are all double the 71-day <laughs> national average with inventory levels that make us wonder, what are they thinking? Well, yeah, funny you say that because last week Stellantis announced it's cutting one of three shifts at the Jeep plant in Detroit and cutting jobs and output at a Jeep plant in Toledo, Ohio. The automaker blamed strict emissions standards adopted by California and a dozen other states that limits its sales of gas-powered vehicles without penalty as California and the others move towards banning sales of gas-powered vehicles in 2035. In my opinion, those states are jumping the gun and being very stupid. Very. Every intelligent person knows the power grid in this country is woefully ill-prepared for massive amounts of EVs in the market, that it's no longer being funny. I want our viewers to think about something when it comes to EVs. 
Give me one single gasoline service station in this country that got built on government subsidies. Every one of them was put up based on market demand in a specific region. The market itself drove it. That's where this EV push is totally different. Evidence that it's our government attempting to push EVs down our throats is that charging stations are being subsidized by the government itself everywhere. The car market itself isn't driving the expansion of EV cars. Tons of people still don't want anything to do with them. That may offend a few of you EV lovers out there who hear this, but it's the truth. And if you haven't already noticed, if there's something we really love here at THG, it's the truth. Yeah, you got it. Speaking of more truth, as the car market moves into 2024 on a downward trend, it can be advantageous for car buyers in eight unique and simultaneous ways. Like number one, lower car prices. This continues to be the case for many of the savvy channel members that we've been coaching. A declining market means that sellers are facing increased competition, and we are expecting to see reduced pricing continue as dealers strive to attract buyers. This can result in more affordable options for car buyers, allowing them to potentially purchase a vehicle at a much lower cost than what we've seen in the last few years in the midst of what was a seller's market. Number two, negotiation power. You should always negotiate everything. In a clear buyer's market, consumers typically have more negotiation power, and anyone watching this video must always remember that. Who cares what any dealer is asking? The power is firmly in your hands now, so don't be whining to us about what any given dealer in your area is still doing. It will never be all dealers who get the memo, friends. So let me say this, in 2024, you can expect most salespeople and most dealerships to be more willing to offer discounts, incentives, or favorable financing terms to close your car deals. This knowledge can empower savvy buyers to secure better deals and potentially save a nice stack of money. Always remember that saving money is up to you. Number three, increased selection. As we've pointed out, inventory is up across all brands. As the market declines, dealerships are likely to accumulate excess inventory, and that works in your favor. This means there will be more vehicles and a longer list of cars that have been sitting on dealer lots for months. This leads to a wider selection of vehicles to choose from, including new and used cars, but it will be the savvy car shopper that finds them. Think of it this way. If you aren't finding what you're looking for at this point, that's on you. If the dealer has to order something in for you, you're looking at a model with teeny tiny inventory. Maybe it's time to broaden your search. Number four, better trade-in deals. Believe it or not, even in a falling car market, you can still do well with your trade-in. If you're looking to trade in your current vehicle, you might automatically think you're likely to lose out on your existing vehicle with lower trade bids. But interestingly, a declining market can still work in your favor. As we mentioned on a recent show, get your trade evaluated by CarMax first and then use that info to bring other dealers up. Dealerships have been known to offer more competitive trade-in values simply to encourage buyers to purchase their next car from them. Sure. Encouraging buyers to snap up a car deal is exactly what dealers must do right now. Number five, reduced pressure. I especially love this one. Definitely. In a market downturn, salespeople often become less aggressive in their sales tactics. You'll actually see customer service improve in 2024. Hallelujah. This can, yeah. This can create a more relaxed and pressure-free buying environment for many people, allowing buyers to make better decisions at their own pace. Number six, access to better financing. Interest rates on auto loans will continue to be more favorable in a declining market as financial institutions compete for borrowers. This can result in lower financing costs for car buyers, making it more affordable if you have to finance your next vehicle. Number seven, extended warranties and incentives. For those of you who are extended warranty buyers, to stimulate car sales during a market slowdown, automakers and dealerships may offer extended warranties, maintenance packages, or other incentives at reduced prices to sweeten the deal for those of you who want them. Number eight, more time for research. Every one of you should be taking advantage of this one. In a declining market, you're likely to feel less rushed to make a decision. If there ever was a time to take your time car shopping, here in 2024, this is it. This extra time can allow you to conduct thorough research, compare different models, and make a well-informed choice that suits your needs and budget. Take the time and make dealers earn your business. This goes way beyond mere car market speculation. Car buyers have wondered, is the market going up or down? There's a lot of opinions out there among content creators, right? The better question is, what do the facts say about this? Today, we have the cold hard facts to share with you. 
Today we've got something absolutely mind-blowing for you. On behalf of our channel members, we've been booking out vehicles and after coming across one of the holdovers from 2023 and Kevin asking me to book it out again, valuable data came out of that process. We've been digging deep through bookouts since early November and we've got some black book evidence that's about to turn the car market upside down. Are you ready for a wild ride and ready to take some notes? We're talking jaw-dropping statistics, exclusive insider information, and a closer look at why the car market is experiencing a shockwave like we haven't seen in years. But we'd be remiss if we didn't first remind you to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on groundbreaking updates like this. Now let's dive right into the hard evidence. We're sharing the black book values that hold the secrets of the car market's decline. Brace yourself because what we're about to reveal might just leave you wondering how you can get in on these deals. Our team of experts has dissected the numbers, crunched the data, and unearthed some shocking revelations that will make you seriously rethink your negotiations on your next car purchase. It all comes out of the service we provide for channel members with black book values on used cars. So buckle up, folks. Get ready to witness the unraveling of the used car market like we haven't seen in years. This evidence will change the way you look at the automotive industry here in 2024. And yes, we will continue to update this information in the weeks ahead. Let's rev up the engines and ignite the excitement. It's time to uncover the shocking truth about the plummeting used car market together. Don't forget these are the most trusted book values by banks and car dealers everywhere. We will be using the high book values for comparison purposes only, but you should by no means be paying high book values for used cars in the market right now. In a falling car market, you always go by average or rough retail numbers. Let's get this party started. First up is a 2023 Subaru Forester with just 200 miles on it, sitting in the used category, and we booked it out on December 12th in anticipation of year end, and then rebooked it on January 5th. In the retail category, you see that the vehicle dropped from a top book value of 39,475 on December 12th and dropped all the way back to $38,050. That's a drop of $1,425. And that's about a 4% drop in just over a 24 day period. Now on a falling car market, no vehicle should ever be selling in the high book category. That was only true back in the spring of 2023 or late 2022 when prices were on the way up. In a falling car market, the highest any vehicle should be priced is average retail or rough retail. Our channel member, Mark, who both Kevin and I have been working with, wrote the following brilliant email to Mike the salesman on this Subaru Forester. It reads, Mike, I've given it some thought. I've looked into it and asked a dealer friend of mine about this car. He means us. The price you gave me is not what the current price for the vehicle would be. In fact, this vehicle has gone down in value about $1,400 since 12-12. That's black book rough estimate. I also know that you paid roughly $27,000 for it on trade when the fellow turned it in. So after having seen all that, my offer is now $30,000, moving down from $31,000. If I take this car much more over that, I'll be taking a bath myself in 30 days or so as it will go down more in value. So that's my final offer on the vehicle. You can choose to take it or leave it. Like I said, I'm just looking for a dealer willing to earn my business. I appreciate the time. Hope you've had a good new year and weekend. He signs off with Mark. Such a well-written email and scores <laughs> extra points for such reasonable demands. Sure. Now, how did Mark know the dealer likely paid 27000 for that Forester? Because we also sent Mark the black book trade-in values on it and told him the dealer very likely told the previous buyer they would have a very hard time selling a vehicle that was new just 200 miles ago. Couldn't give him much more than a retail low book value offer. Black book says that number is 27000 You see, we know how these dealers operate. Mike, the salesman, who seemed unwilling to budge back in December on an offer of $31,000 on the same vehicle, it was priced at $35,324, just $221 below the MSRP of $35,545. Mike now responded to Mark's latest email by saying, I'll check with my manager. <laughs> that kind of a response tells us that Mark hit the nail on the head with his reasonable offer. It's factual and reasonable. There's a really good chance Mark gets a smoking hot deal as a direct result of his savage negotiation style. Yeah. Well done, Mark. Way to go. Next up is a 2020 Toyota Tundra with between 19 and 20,000 miles on it. Its high book value was at 49,700 on November 30th. On January 8th, it had dropped back to $47,050. That's a drop of a whopping $2,650, a 5.3% drop in just 39 days. When we talk about how big the depreciation is after you drive the car off the lot, if you had bought this vehicle in late November, you'd have to add $2,650 to your losses. Ouch. Yep. Another great example 
A 2023 Buick Enclave with 22 to 23,000 miles on it had a high book value of $48,775 on November 21st. We just booked it out again on January 8th and it has dropped back to $47,375. One of our members actually bought this vehicle and negotiated an excellent price on it. He sure did. Here's a 2019 Dodge Durango with 43 to 44,000 miles. It had a high book value of $31,675 on November 21st. We just booked it out again on January 8th and has dropped back to $29,575. That's a drop of 2,100 smackers. A 2019 Lincoln Navigator with 20,000 miles had a high book value of $54,675 on November 17th. We just booked it out again on January 8th, and it has dropped back to $49,600. That's a whopping drop of $5,075. That's huge. Here's a 2023 Hyundai Santa Fe with 12,000 miles. It had a high book value of $41,250 on November 20th. We just booked it out again on January 8th, and it has dropped back to 38800 That's a drop of $2,450. A 2021 Jeep Gladiator Rubicon with 31,000 miles had a high book value of $55,375 on November 3rd. We just booked it out again on January 8th, and it has dropped back to $51,900. That's a drop of $3,475. A 2021 Acura RDX with 10,000 miles had a high book value of $39,775 on November 20th. We just booked it out again on January 8th, and it has dropped back to $37,950. That's a drop of $1,825. <laughs> a 2019 Infiniti QX80 with 64,000 miles had a high book value of $38,225 on November 8th. We just booked it out again on January 8th, and it has dropped back to $36,000. 200. That's a drop of $2,025. That's thousands of dollars in price drops in mere weeks on all of these examples. The share with you today shows a train wreck in process that should scare the pants off of many of you. <laughs> and today, we're doing something different at the end of the show. We will do it from now on. We're sharing good questions or wisdom from other viewers or some truly dumb assumptions some viewers make. Who was the savvy buyer? Who was the bad assumer? Find out at the end. Hopefully, you learn something from their wisdom or bad assumptions. Liz, <laughs> take it away. Sounds fun. First up, if you bought a car during the pandemic years, the end of 2020, all of 2021 and 2022, and you financed it, you're virtually guaranteed to be upside down in your car loan right now, and that's the worst it's ever been. That's right, and unfortunately, many consumers are just electing to let their cars go. Repossessions are skyrocketing. In December of 2023, Cox Automotive reported that inflation, the cost of cars in general, and the borrowing rates being charged by banks are causing an increase in delinquencies or repossessions. With no end in sight, Cox Automotive estimated that 1.5 million vehicles will be seized by the end of 2023, wow. up from 1.2 million in 2022. So friends, while 2022 was a bad year, 2023 has beaten 2022 by 25%. This is definitely not good. Nope. For those of you who still have your late 2020, 21, or 22 car purchases, if your car isn't in danger of being repossessed, I can tell you that you're almost 100% guaranteed to be buried in it financially. The only way to fix it is to put more cash into it. If you're thinking about trading out of it sometime soon, forget about it. Pay it down first. Remember all those dealers selling cars at MSRP with market adjustments tacked on the top, and then all the used cars being sold at near new car prices? 100% of that extra profit went right into the pockets of the dealers charging those prices, and now you're the one suffering from it. Cha ching Yeah. Negative equity in buyer's car is often referred to as being upside down on a car loan is a situation where the amount owed on the car is more than the car's current value. That nightmare situation is what is leading many car owners to just let their vehicles go back to the bank. But don't get too excited about those cars just yet. As you'll see in a moment, Many of those cars bought overpriced during the pandemic are having a ton of car problems to boot. You heard me right. If negative equity and huge numbers of repossessions aren't enough, recalls are increasing in huge numbers right now. These are basically the pandemic cars that are being repossessed, and that's not good. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, there were more than 320 recalls for major manufacturers issued by regulators in 2023 which affects a whopping 32 million vehicles. Oh, wow. Amazingly, the number of recalls in 2023 was dramatically less than that in 2022, which had 932 recalls. For a list of the biggest offenders, here are the top 10 worst brands for recalls. 
Ford Motor had 56 recalls covering 5.9 million vehicles. Chrysler had 45 recalls covering 2.7 million vehicles. Next up is Mercedes with 31 recalls and 478,000 vehicles. General Motors, who some bash on for quality, had 25 recalls covering 2 million vehicles. Nissan had 23 recalls involving 1.8 million vehicles, and Kia had 21 recalls involving 3.1 million vehicles. Jaguar is also on the top 10 list with 21 recalls covering 85,000 vehicles, followed by Volkswagen with, with 20 recalls in more than 452,000 vehicles. The biggest surprise was Honda. With a long-time reputation for high-quality cars, they had 19 recalls with 6.3 million cars involved. What's worse than the raw numbers at Honda, 6.3 million recalled vehicles. That is bad enough alone. But for the first time in a long time, the recalls involve their engines. No, I'm not kidding. Honda recalled nearly 250,000 vehicles because engine rod bearings were failing, causing engines to run poorly. Honda has issued a recall because those rod bearings in the engine could wear and seize, damaging the engine, which could result in the yeah. engine running improperly or stalling while driving. This is an absolute disaster for Honda. And of course, these are the COVID era cars we are talking about. Late 2020, all of 2021 and 2022. Stay away from them. You mentioned in the opening about Hyundai and Kia engine problems. It's actually past models that are being recalled. In September 2023, it was announced that the Hyundai and Kia are recalling nearly 3.4 million vehicles in the U.S. and telling owners to park them outside due <laughs> to the risk of engine compartment fires. The recalls covered multiple car and SUV models from the 2010 through 2019 model years, including Hyundai Santa Fe SUV and Kia Sorento SUV. Documents posted by the U.S. National Highway Traffic Safety Administration say the anti-lock brake control module can leak fluid and cause an electrical short, which can touch off a fire while the vehicles are either parked or being driven. Yes, so that's not a pandemic problem, yeah. but that's just a manufacturer that makes really crappy cars. It has had that reputation for years. As far as other things go, Liz, do you remember those Kia Sportages that we had on the lot in that last dealer we got in Minnesota? and their terrible handling situation. Oh yeah. They literally spun out on blacktop, lightly covered with fresh fallen snow. One of the worst winter handling vehicles I've ever seen. And I'm guessing some car buyers who got them in the warm months of summer, bought the SUV for assumed better snow handling capabilities. Oh yeah. Only to regret their decision when the cold weather came. They were certainly disappointed if they thought a Kia Sportage was a good winter vehicle. Liz, you've done a ton of the Black Book valuations recently. What have you seen lately on our channel members looking for used cars? That's a great question, Kevin. Going back about six months ago, used cars were consistently selling at Black Book's clean retail level, but all that changed with the arrival of the falling used car market. The cars that people are asking me to book out right now are regularly falling on the low end of the retail spectrum, and I'm talking about prices at the average retail numbers or even at rough retail numbers. Now, I must caution people not to be confused that I'm not talking about the car's actual condition because I'm not. I'm talking about the condition of the car market. To explain further, what I'm talking about is a retail range of prices that go all the way from a low retail range, which is about rough retail numbers, all the way up to high retail range of extra clean retail. When you drop down from the high retail range in a seller's market to the low retail range for the buyer's market that we're in, that is often a price adjustment of thousands of dollars, and that's a huge savings. Yes, thousands of dollars saved in just a few months' time. It's not too hard to figure out why, if there are new cars available at attractive prices, more people decide to buy a new car and then trade in their old one, right. thus putting more used vehicles into dealers' hands. And to move these used vehicles, dealers have to sell at reduced prices. Right now, as Liz said, that's the low range of the retail price spectrum. Literally every channel member we are working with right now, especially if the vehicle is used, we are coaching them on what a good retail price is right now, based on Black Book, of course, and that number is a reasonable number that any reasonable and market savvy dealer ought to take it or you as a car buyer ought to just leave it. Walk away. So just like you've come to expect from us, let's dive into the newest inventory report from Cox Automotive. And this is great news for both new and used car buyers. Inventory rises to three-year high. Here's an analysis of the impact on the auto industry. The automotive industry is witnessing a significant shift in its market dynamics. After facing unprecedented challenges due to the COVID-19 pandemic, which led to the severe decrease in production and a consequential shortage in new vehicle inventory, the industry is now experiencing a reversal of these trends. According to Cox Automotive, the nation's inventory has surged to over 2.7 million vehicles, marking a three-year high. 
This shift has far-reaching implications for manufacturers, dealers, and consumers, taking the car market, which was clearly a seller's market, into an obvious buyer's market. This means for those of you who need a car right away, that not only are car deals more reasonable right now, but those of you with time on your side and can wait, car prices will continue to drop. And that's great news. Now let's chat in more detail about the impact of pricing and consumer choices. This increase in inventory is a welcome change for consumers who have been dealing with inflated prices and limited options. As Liz pointed out, the inflated prices are rapidly deflating. Yep. And the choices are expanding quickly. With a higher volume of vehicles on lots, potential car buyers can expect a wider array of choices, both in terms of models and dealer price points. It's likely that you will continue to see a normalization of vehicle prices as the supply-demand equation stabilizes. This normalization will be particularly beneficial for those seeking new vehicles as the high prices have pushed many buyers towards the used car market or to delay their car purchase altogether. This brings implications for dealerships and sales strategies. For dealerships, the surge in inventory marks a shift in sales strategies. The scarcity of vehicles had previously allowed dealers to sell cars at or above the manufacturer's suggested retail price, MSRP, often without needing to invest in traditional sales incentives. That opportunity is out the window, so literally nobody should be looking at MSRP car deals and certainly not above MSRP. Now as inventory levels rise, dealers and manufacturers need to reintroduce discounts and incentives to attract car buyers and remain competitive. I love it. Yeah. This change also creates a shift in the power dynamic between informed buyers and sellers, giving informed consumers more leverage in negotiations. I say informed because you're only going to find the deals that we're talking about if you're informed. Dealerships will have to adjust their inventory management strategies, focusing on turning over their increased inventory more rapidly to avoid overstock and high costs associated with that. The long-term outlook for the automotive industry is positive for car buyers. The continued rise in inventory is a sign of the industry's resilience and ability to adapt to challenging circumstances. It suggests they move toward a more balanced future car market, which is essential for long-term sustainability. However, the auto industry must remain cautious and responsive to external factors such as economic fluctuations, changes in consumer behavior, and potential future disruptions. In addition, the industry's focus on electrical vehicles, EVs, and sustainability initiatives is likely to continue shaping production and inventory strategies. As more consumers shift towards EVs, and they did sell quite a few of them, you have to admit, 13.5 million worldwide, in fact, fully electric or battery electric vehicles, BEVs, accounted for 9.5 million out of the 13.6 million EVs sold around the world in 2023. In the coming years, automakers will need to balance their inventory to meet these steadily evolving demands. New car supply comfortably hits 80 days. Toyota inventory is up 20% in just the last 30 days. February opened with 80 days of new vehicle supply across the industry, the highest since June 2020, according to Cox Automotive's analysis of the auto available inventory data. It's a new high water mark of 2.61 million cars. The most exciting news is that Toyota's inventory now easily exceeds 30 days. We knew this day was coming. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, and joining me across the way is the amazing Elizabeth. I agree that the news of Toyota's inventory growing is a definite highlight in this report. For many months, they've been lagging far behind the industry, down in the dumps with just 10 to 15 days of supply at one time. Those days are finally behind us with Toyota now sitting at 36 days. That means they definitely have enough inventory to be a lot hungrier for car deals right now. I'm a little shocked and surprised that at the start of February, the total U.S. supply of available unsold new vehicles was 2.61 million units. That is a 50% improvement over a year ago, a whopping increase of 870,000 units just That's in the lot. last year. And to think that for the longest time, there was a strategy in place to keep inventory low. The last time day supply crossed the 80-day mark was June 1st, 2020, when it was at 83-day supply level. Things are almost back to pre-pandemic normals. The Cox Automotive's day supply is based on the daily retail sales rate for the most recent 30-day period, which ended February 5th. There will be another update soon. It should come as no surprise to anyone that domestic automakers have the highest inventory levels because they have for a while now. Yeah. Dodge had the highest of any make by a wide margin, followed by Chrysler, Lincoln, and Ram. Brands with the low supply were Asian imports. We'll go through each brand here in just a moment, so stay with us. 
Here we see a much improved inventory for Toyota, now sitting at 36 days. Honda is also much improved at 48 days. Lexus is at 54 days, with Mazda sitting at 59. We've seen a fair number of decent deals get sent to us to review on Mazda, so Mazda dealers are wheeling and dealing right now across the country. Land Rover and Cadillac both sit at 60 days. Kia is at 61 days. That's a little bit of a surprise. Porsche is now at 68 days. Subaru at 75 days. And BMW sitting on 77 days. This brings us to the industry average of 80 days. Chevrolet inventory is at 81 days, and GMC hanging close at 83 days. Acura is a big shocker at 89 days, and Mercedes-Benz, 91 days. Hyundai is well ahead of the industry average with 93 days of inventory. Mini sits at 96 days, Mitsubishi at 97 days. Wow, that's a lot of inventory. That is. Volkswagen is building cars like there's no tomorrow with 101 days of inventory. Ford is at 104 days, Audi at 107. Now we get into the what the heck are they thinking categories with (laughs) Nissan holding at 112 days supply, Buick and Jeep both at 119 days supply, Infinity is at 123 days with Genesis, a bit of a shocker, sitting at 126 days. Seemingly with the goal of setting a new high watermark, way up and breaking records is Ram with 153 days of inventory. No wonder Ram rebates have been quite good lately. They really need to move these vehicles. Lincoln, Chrysler, and Dodge are even higher with more than double the industry average. That means all three of those brands are over 160 days, and that's incredible. I wouldn't be surprised to hear about plants shutting down with inventory levels like that. Of the top 30 models, the new Toyota Grand Highlander had the lowest level due to a part that the limited and platinum trim level share that Toyota can't seem to get consistently. It's the 360 camera, which is not available on the XLE. So the XLE is easier to get. The word is that it's the supplier that's having the problems, not Toyota specifically. The low inventory struggle is shared by the Ford Maverick, which comes standard as a hybrid, so more new parts there too. Yep. The new Chevy Trax was also at the lower end. At the other end of the spectrum, pickup trucks, led by the Ram 1500 and SUVs, led by the Ford Bronco Sport, had the highest inventory of all. The average new vehicle listing price, we've talked about this before, opened February at $47,142, down 1% from a year ago. The average listing price rose throughout December 2023 and started January high, but prices began declining in the second week of January and have been dropping by almost 1% per week. The U.S. new vehicle average transaction price in January was 47401 down nearly 4% from a year ago and down almost 3% from December 2023, according to Kelly Blue Book. The month of December, when luxury vehicle sales typically surge, often sees a jump in average transaction prices. Discounts and incentives in January averaged 5.7% of annual transaction price, up from 5.5% in December And this jump in discounts was nearly 100% higher than a year ago. Friends, on the used car side, we just published this video titled Tax Time Car Prices. We advised, do not buy a car right now. This phenomenon can be short-lived and we think it is actually peaking here in March. But for those of you who either must get a car right now because of circumstances outside of your control, at a bare minimum, visit our website, thehomerguy.com, and take advantage of all the free resources that we have there. The free car buyer's guide, which was temporarily missing, is back. (laughs) Sorry about any inconvenience. And last of all, for those of you who have no choice but to be in the car market right now and you're feeling not so confident about going it alone, get one of our memberships for direct help. Just visit our website, thehomeworkguy.com, and go to the memberships page and select a package that's right for you. The link is appearing on the screen now, thehomeworkguy.com slash membership. I think it would be appropriate for us to give people a better understanding of what's included in the membership packages. Sure. The six ninety nine dollars dealer referrals package is a list of better dealers we've identified. But if a dealer near you with a specific brand that you need isn't on it, you can ask us to identify some better dealer options near you. We have a way of identifying better dealers that has served us very well in the past, and we'll be glad to assist you with that. The twenty four ninety nine dollars Homework Guy Help Package is email assistance directly with me. I'll answer your questions, point you in the right direction, and supply you with used car book values through BlackBook. Most of the time, I'm able to respond to messages multiple times throughout the day. Next up is the $49.99 Consults Package, which includes direct assistance with me via text, along with text support with the amazing Elizabeth. Response time is also very quick, same day typically from either one of us. 
The biggest package is the direct phone call, only available on our website, thehomeworkguy.com. Price is $99, and it involves a 45-minute phone call directly with Kevin, the host of the show. You can also get follow-up tech support with that, email support from me, and Black Book car values via email from me, too. By far, it's the most comprehensive, all-inclusive package of direct services that we offer for you. So if you're needing a confidence boost and would like direct assistance from us, visit our website today at thehomeworkguy.com and get signed up right away. And we do love working directly with our members. The reports of great deals that you guys are getting out there with our assistance are very inspiring. That's right. We greatly appreciate the opportunity to work with all of you. Thanks again to our many faithful followers who just keep coming back. And to all of our longtime subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. On behalf of the entire Homer Guy team and the amazing Elizabeth, I'm Kevin Hunter. Thanks for listening.